This program is sponsored by the partners of Keith Butler Ministries. Today on Live Your Faith. Whatever it is you may face, there is nothing more powerful than God's power. Man, when you get God's power focused on a singular situation and a singular person and a singular disease or a singular power problem that the devil has cooked up, there is no power strong enough to stop the power of God from wiping it out. Seeking to reach every continent with the Word of God, Bishop Keith Butler is teaching the Word, doing the work, and touching the world. And now, here with today's teaching, Bishop Keith Butler. Turn to John 17. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, St. John 17. The Lord Jesus here in what is the Lord's Prayer. We know the Lord's Prayer is not our Father, in heaven, how be thy name, kingdom come, will be done in earth, and heaven, give us the day, give us the day, amen. <laughs> he did what I told him. That ain't the Lord's Prayer. That's the disciples' prayer. Amen. Jesus taught them how to pray certain things. But we read here in St. John 17. Notice what the Lord Jesus said in verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Well, then we'll read some of his specifics. He doesn't say, I'm praying for them, Lord, so bless them. Bless them, Lord. Help them. Help Peter. Help John. Bless Bless Bartholomew and bless Matthew. Now you're doing something when you ask him to bless him. Amen, broadly. But we see here in verse 11. Now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own authority those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. Well, that word keep there in the Greek means to guard from loss. Guard them through your own authority, the ones you've given me, that they may be one. So he's praying specifically here. And once again, everything in the scripture, you must always remember John 14, 10. John 14, 10 is the template for everything you're going to read. Hallelujah. It's how Jesus did what he did, and it's the reason why he said in John 14, 12, the works that I do, you will do too. And greater works because I go to the Father. Hallelujah. In other words, I don't speak my own words. I only say his words. Hallelujah. I believe his words and act on whatever he says to do. I get out the way and he does the work. Well, we can do the same thing. We can seek the face of the Father. We can get the Father's word. We can believe the Father's word. We can speak the Father's word. We can then do whatever he says to do. Get out the way and watch him do the work. Glory to God. Notice what he, he's still praying. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says in verse 13, And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them thy word. The world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am now of the world. I pray not that thou should have taken them out of the world, but that thou should have keep. There's that word again. Amen. That thou may guard them from loss, causing the evil in the world. He then prays in verse 17, sanctify them, set them apart through thy truth. That's your word. Praise God. In other words, his prayer is very specific. Now, Romans 1.16 says, The word of God is the power of God unto deliverance. Unto salvation, that word there. Praise God. The word of God is the power. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, the word, is the, power. the word is the power. Since the word is the power, what kind of power is that? Tremendous power. Force. Amen. And if the word is the power, then 
What do you think then we should be praying? Should be praying the word. One thing we're about to leave here, go speak to Atlanta church. And one of the things that we're doing down there, praise God, is that we have prayer requests, written ones. And I tell them, all right, now then, then we come together as a congregation over, over the prayer request. And I said, don't send no prayer requests in here unless you've got a word from the Lord about it. Get the scripture and write it. Hallelujah. Amen. You know the problem is all right, but you also got the answer available to you. Maybe I get an amen on this side. Amen. You know what the problem is all right, but what you need to do now is get in the scripture and then get before God. Pray and find out. He may eliminate this scripture to you. That's now a word from the Lord to you. Amen. Take the time before you just, well, Lord, do something about this. I'm praying for you to move this problem. Well, I'm preaching better than getting an amen. <laughs> amen. Get before God and say, now, what do you want me to say in the earth? Death and life's in the power of the tongue. Amen. Now you get from God. Use this scripture. Praise God. Now it's now a rhema word. Say, write that down on that request. That's what we going to pray over your situation. Amen. Now, guess what's happening? Praise God. Romans 1, 6, things happen. That word is the power of God unto salvation. That power is tremendous power that's available. Man, we getting testimony. We getting written testimonies about what's happening. Let me tell you what's happening. Praise God when you have got something from God. And then you're saying only what God's got to say about it. You have made his power available in the earth. There is nothing in the earth that Satan can do about God's power. Hallelujah. We might want to pray before service before we get up, get up here and find out what we're supposed to pray. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I said, oh, glory. No wonder Samuel said, Samuel said in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 12, he said, I will not sin against the Lord by not praying for you. He said it was a sin against God. Why would it be a sin against God for Samuel not to pray for the children of Israel? Because God didn't get to move in the earth until Samuel did pray. But whether or not God gets to move just broadly, or whether or not he gets to focus all his power on a specific issue is up to a listening and obedient church that can then declare in the earth, praise God. Then God's really got something to move on. His eyes are searching to and fro, trying to find somebody he, he can show himself strong through. He wants to do the work. He wants to be the one that does, does it all. We can't do nothing about it. Even Jesus said he couldn't do nothing about it. He said the Father does the work. Oh, now that kind of changes things a little bit. I mean, it's kind of, oh, oh, maybe, maybe then I shouldn't be so fast to just move here. Maybe I need to, yeah, here's the problem. But maybe I need to take some time before God in prayer to say, all right, what do you want me to announce? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then, praise God, the word said in what, 1 Corinthians 1 30, Jesus has made unto us wisdom. That's what we're seeking. We're seeking the wisdom of God. I just don't want to just, I mean, see, God can go as far as, he can go to a certain extent. But whether or not he gets to go fully with all he wants to do, it's dependent upon the ones he gave authority in the earth to let him do it. That's the church. Now, turn to St. John 16. Praise God. Glory to God. Can I get three praise the Lord's here? 
Praise the Lord. Now here's Jesus talking. Listen to what the Lord Jesus has to say about this. He said in John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Anybody know who the spirit of truth is? Amen. Is he come? Yeah. <laughs> He's here, right? Yeah. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Jesus said in John 17, 17, thy word is truth. The word guide means he will show you the way. So you know what he just said? He said, praise God, when the Holy Ghost has come, he will show you what scripture to read. He will show you, praise God, and that word show also there means announce. He will announce to you the word to release. Glory to God. He will guide you into all words, for he shall not speak of himself. You mean the Holy Ghost don't even say his own words? Jesus doesn't say his own words. The Holy Ghost doesn't say his own words. Guess what? Maybe then we shouldn't select our own. Amen. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. You mean the Holy Ghost is listening? He's listening for a word? We already read St. John 14. Jesus said, I ain't speaking my own. Hallelujah. So guess what, guess what Jesus was doing while he was on the earth? He was always listening for a word. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak, and he shall announce you things to come. Ooh. Oh. Hallelujah. Well, guess, guess what the things to come are being announced. What God determines to do about this. What are you facing? Or somebody you praying for facing? God has a determination he wants to put on this. He wants to focus some tremendous power on this. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care what you're talking about. If you're talking about cancer in the fourth stage, if you're talking about, praise God, being $2 million in debt, I don't care whatever it is. Whatever it is you may face, there is nothing more powerful than God's power. Man, when you get God's power focused on a singular situation and a singular person and a singular disease or a singular power problem that the devil has cooked up, there is no power strong enough to stop the power of God from wiping it out. Shout amen, somebody. Glory to I'm here to tell you, Elijah did not choose his own words. Amen. The father told him, you announced this in the earth, and it didn't rain for three and a half years, and Elijah didn't, go, didn't come back again either until the Lord said it's time for you to, to say in the earth something else. Now you can lift it. Glory to God. Now, since that's the case, if you're the devil, what would you try and do? Well, turn to Mark chapter 4. Oh, we're talking about praying with specifics. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody start starting to get a little focus on this right now? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm, I'm starting to get more and more like this, and that is I'm starting to get, all right, here's what the situation is. Now let me get before God. And let me pray. Hallelujah. And I'm listening. Holy Ghost. Now tell me what scriptures and what words you want me to announce on this. Somebody said, yeah, but I need answers now. Well, you forgot something about God. 
I mean, he can restore that even with the canker worms eat. Time is in God's hand, man. He, ra he raises people from the dead. They died and he raises them. Amen. Never put a time frame on God. Don't put a date of calendar. Don't put a time frame. You got to do this by then. Said who? Only if you said so. Hallelujah. I mean, you can only think of two ways. Well, Lord, you know, only if you give me a raise with this job. Only if you do this. Only if that happens. Only if she does this. Lord, may have them do that. What, what makes you think that's the only way this can get, get to you? You can only think of three ways to get it done. God's got three billion ways to get it done. Did you hear what I said? That you ain't never thought of, you ain't never dreamed of, man. I mean, you can't even imagine the stuff God can come up with. Hallelujah. You are limiting him with your words. Stop bracketing God. Now, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, in Mark chapter 4, I've taught this to you so you know that Satan uses, there's actually seven problems in Mark chapter 4. How many of you saw the teaching I did with Brother Copeland? Praise God. Well, in Mark chapter 4, there are actually seven problems there. Amen. The first two are self-inflicted. Then there are five tools that Satan uses. Affliction, persecution, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, entering in chokes the word, causes it to become unfruitful. So the very first two was affliction and persecution, which is pressure brought against you through a circumstance or pressure brought against you through people. How I many found out that Satan will show you some folk against you? And they'll yield to the devil, man. Why? Well, you keep reading there in Mark chapter 4. Till they become offended. Scandalizo in the Greek. Till they become offended. Okay. What's Satan trying to do? He's trying to stop the word. Why? Because of verse 20. See, so read verse 20. Praise God. Verse 20 says here, And these are they which are sown of good ground, such as hear the word. They what? Hear the word. They what? Hear the word. Hear the word. Guess where we get it from? Holy Ghost. Man, you can't get away from spending time with the Holy Ghost. They hear the word and receive the word and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. You mean to tell me there's 10,000% increase on that word? Well, man, I don't want to speak my words on this because my words may only have 1% increase. Or in fact, I just might get back what I lost. Hallelujah. His word has the ability for 100 fold. See, they heard the word. Keep reading here. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? In other words, he's not hiding his word from you. It's out here. He intends for it to be an open reward. He's not hiding this. Praise God. There is nothing hid which shall not be manifest. Now there was anything kept secret that should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. If any man have ears, if any man has ears, if any man has ears, let him hear. Ain't not talking about these outside on the side of your skull. He's talking about listening to the Holy Ghost. Where is the Holy Ghost? Where is he? He's right here. If any man have ears to hear, are you listening? That's why I'm, I'm in listening mode right now, even to preach. Hallelujah. I walked away from the notes about the first minute. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I'm listening in here right now. Go over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. What? What the Spirit would say to the church? You see, praise God, God is not in control. The church is in control of the world. 
God is supposed to be in, in control of the church. And the church has in it the power. It's got all the authority. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Keep reading. He said, praise God, verse 24, take heed what you hear. And with what measure ye meet, which means what degree you hear it. Not only do you want to hear, how much credibility will you give to what you hear? He says, it shall be measured unto you. Unto you that hear shall more be given. To those that hear, more comes. Now you understand that. Praise God. Amen. This is my brother, brother-in-law, Mac, and my sister here, Kim. Right. I'm, I'm going to use them as an example. They may be mad at me when I'm done, but I love them. <laughs> now, I just think something here. I think if you keep talking to Mac and Mac don't listen to you, and you keep trying to tell Mac something Mac doesn't listen to you, he won't pay no attention to you, he keep watching a football game or something, he ain't paying you no mind. Right? I know one time, man, <laughs> I'm sitting there watching the football, you know, I know I like football. So I'm after, after church, I'm home, I'm watching a football game one day. And Pastor Deborah, God, we had been married less than a year. And Pastor Deborah got up and stood in front of the television. Wait, waited till the fourth quarter <laughs> and stood in front of the television. And I said, what are you doing? You know, this is the closing drive, right? Win the game, right? What are you doing? Get out of the way. Why are you standing in front of the You know, first I thought she was just by accident. I don't know what she's doing, but, but she did it on purpose. She's standing there in front of the television. I said, what's the matter? Get out of the way! <laughs> well, I hadn't been listening to her. I had been listening to the football. Now, ladies, don't go do this. <laughs> that was the first and last time she ever did that. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> she ain't never done that since. Come on, somebody. Praise God. But I hadn't been listening to her, what, what she was trying to tell me, so she did, decided to get my attention. Good. Amen? Well, you know what happens if she keep on trying to say something to you and you finally don't, don't listen, because she eventually, that's that. Amen? Then whatever consequences come along with that, come along with that. I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise God. What do you think happens when you don't listen to God? The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Okay, he keeps trying to press you. He's trying to, I'm trying to tell you what to say. I'm trying to tell you what to release. I'm trying to give you a word that's supernatural right here, but you won't listen. But you know what happens if she's talking to him and he's always giving her eye contact? Brothers, when your wife is talking to you, look her in the eye. Amen. Am I right, ladies? Amen. Uh -huh. Give her eye contact, put the paper down, put the sports section down, put the TV remote control down, put it all down, give her eye contact, uh, eye contact, yes, baby. Look her right in the eye. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. If you do that every time she tries to talk to you, guess what she's going to do? She's going to share more with you. You're going to learn some things. And whatever consequences come from that come, too. Shonda, Shonda. She gets real happy when you are willing to pay her the attention and give her word full credibility. Praise God. You need to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and it's easy to do. The Bible said in the book of Romans, chapter 10, if you will acknowledge him with your mouth as being the supreme authority of all, and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the scripture said you would be saved. The next verse says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession or acknowledgement is made unto salvation. Romans 10:13 reads, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. That would include you. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me right now and pray with me. And the Lord Jesus will come into your heart and you will not be the same. Yes, life will be worth living. Pray with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, that's right, pray with me out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died for me. He carried my sins on the cross, was crucified for me, was put in a grave for me, and went to hell in my place. Thank you, Jesus. But I also believe he's risen from the dead now, and he's the Lord of heaven. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my savior and as the master of my life. I repent of sin. I'm sorry, Lord. And I accept your offer of forgiveness. So I'm now forgiven. I'm now cleansed. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my master. I'm restored. Praise God to God. Hallelujah. If you just prayed that prayer with me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming to your heart. You'll not be the same. Now my announcer will tell you what to do from here. The Word of God entered your spirit as you just received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, the real you. Your spirit was born again. That means that you're now a new creation in Christ, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This process started an immediate change in your mind and body. However, to continue this process of change, you must put away your old habits and learn how to walk in your new life with God by starting your day with the Father in prayer. Just a simple prayer of praise and thanksgiving helps to build your fellowship with God. Thank Him for His love, confidence, patience, loving kindness, peace, healing power, safety from all dangers, mercy, wisdom, and guidance for this day. Be sure to take the time to read the Word of God daily. Just like your natural body needs food, your spirit man needs to be fed the Word of God. Also, please write to the address on your screen so we can send you this very important booklet called Where Do I Go From Here? It contains a wealth of information that you will need now that you've decided to ask the Lord into your heart and continue your walk with God. Finally, it's important that you also take the time to find a church home and have fellowship with other full-time gospel believers. Our prayer for you is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Was today's program a blessing to you? What you heard was only a part of this powerful message. You can order the entire service today on CD, DVD, MP3, or caption DVD. Simply visit us anytime at our e-store online at www.keithbutler.org or call us at 1-888-909-9673. Order today for yourself, a family member, or a friend. And... Let the Word of God begin to work in your life right now. This concludes our program. We'd like to thank our KBN partners and thank you for watching.